Let's move to the Saturday night game, and that would be the 49ers and the Packers. 49ers win at 13 to 10. And first off, let me show a little appreciation for a snowy Saturday evening playoff game in Lambeau Field. It, it was very enjoyable to watch. I mean, just the the elements and everything else surrounding it, it's what you want from a game at Lambeau in January. We don't get a ton of night playoff games in Green Bay. And the fact that we got this one, I mean, it was, and, and it was a good ball game. Like, I enjoyed it thoroughly, thoroughly. Did, uh, before we get into the details and whatnot, you know, it, did it kind of bring the same to you? I mean, I, I was sitting at home just laid up. Obviously, I was not doing as well yesterday as I am today. But, uh, but I really did enjoy just the, the scene and the view and seeing all the Packers fans and everything. I mean, yeah, it was fine. There's, I'm, I'm starting to come around to playoff. I, I kind of wish that we didn't determine champions based on the weather, and and I, I that is sacrilegious to everything that I've grown up loving. Okay, I, you know, give it to me at night, give it to me during the season. I don't have a problem with that. Like where you live is where you live, and where you play is where you play, and that's a home field advantage. But at some point in time, are we gonna are we gonna really are we gonna really let one of these games end up being you know a, a negative twenty degree frozen you know whatever it is, and that's how we're gonna determine who 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 the better team is going forward to win a title? Like we're gonna we're just gonna crown a champion from that. I, I mean, I, I know yeah, I know I, I, I get what you're saying. <laughs> I and I've never been this guy before in my life. All right, I found it to be a strange place while watching this game, and the team that I wanted to do well did well, and they won the game. But it's it still, at some point in time, I thought, huh, one day we're going to have a team from either down south or a dome team or whatever, and they're they're going to be unbelievable. And because of whatever happenstance, they're going to end up playing a football game in you know negative ten degrees with a ton of sleet and rain or frozen rain or whatever coming down. Well, but we had that in, and we're not going to get a, uh, we're not going to get the winner that, that deserves to win. So, so the bears, like the better team isn't going to actually win. Was it, was it the Colts and the bears that played in like that rainy super bowl, uh, 2006 yes. or whatever it was. Um, yes. Well, they so, played in a rainy Super Bowl. It didn't rain, but that, I don't think it was cold. No, it wasn't I think cold. It was in Miami. Um, but I, I feel like that. Well, it, obviously that was same for both of them. Um, yeah. But it was it was an interesting you, game I'm because it did affect. They all the, need to be indoors, yeah. and I understand there's you know there are things that can happen that you can't control. Like you know, I I get it. But it's just it was just, it's just a weird feeling. Okay, I'm not saying it's wrong. <laughs> I'm not saying that I'm right. Because I'm not even anything on this. I'm not sold on this. It was just a weird, I'm watching this thing happen. And and at some point in time throughout the game, I'm just thinking, man, this is not how champions should be crowned. So it's interesting that you bring it up because I was thinking during the game, I thought, you know, it's, it's very interesting because this should be a home field advantage for a team that's actually from Green Bay, right? That's right. But Green Bay's biggest advantage over another team is their quarterback play. And it has been for multiple years Not just quarterback play. Right. If it was a mobile quarterback like Lamar, that's one thing. Right. This is is a quarterback that has stopped running many years ago. Yes. And now he's just a pocket-passing quarterback. He can scramble and throw, but he's still a thrower. And when it is that cold, the passing game takes a bit of a dip, right? And and that defense and that running game, while good – that's the not style great. of weather that the 49ers, while they're not accustomed to that type of weather, their style of football fits it. Yes. They run the football. They run it from a zone blocking scheme that is incredibly difficult to figure out. And they play smash mouth defense. Right. And they want to play the game in the mud. And they want to play it in the trenches. And 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 so, yeah, I'm just, like I said, I'm not, I'm not married to that. You saw it and had a nostalgia thought. I saw it, and some weird old man crotchety. I don't like this. Came into me, which is strange because the I think the old man crotchety thing would have been much more 
this is how all football this needs is how to be the football game's supposed to play. That's right. <laughs> no, I know that. I know that. It's a it was a it's a very it's a very weird feeling. It was a very strange thought, but I don't think it's wrong. No, I, like, I don't think I, you're wrong. I, I feel like what now we're getting to a point of like I almost give you wild card weekend, right? Like yeah. if you won your division and and you you get to host and you know if you live in a cold weather and you want to play the game in the cold, that you have that luxury. Outside of that, everybody else we're playing in some type of control. And you don't have to have a dome, but you got to have some type of cover over the top, okay? And that can go over your stadium. And, and it could be cold there, but you're that's going to knock the windshield down considerably. Like, it's not going to be so overbearing that it's going to affect the outcome of the game. Yeah, yeah. I, I can see where you're coming from on that. I can I Because can now that we've see. added a week, and I'm, I would bet my life that in a couple of years we're going to add another week because I don't see them staying at an odd number. I think they're going to go to 18. The reason they went to 17 was eventually to get to 18. Now we're pushing these playoff games back farther and further, unless they're going to start a week earlier, which I wouldn't hate that. I would rather them start a week earlier than go a week later. Because at some point in time, we're going to get this divisional game next week or the week after. And, and it's going, it's going to have a bigger effect the later in the season we go. Yeah. I, I don't disagree with you. I know we haven't talked about that game at all. And literally we both just talked about the weather. And, well, and that, that, that happens. Something that's well, shitty. because that's I think that's a big part of it, right? Um, let's let's talk about some of the uh, I guess insights from this game. Uh, per Elias, the 49ers now seven and five all time in the playoffs against number one seeds. They are one of five franchises with winning records in such games. Uh, along with that, um, you win this battle. Uh, six of the last eight postseason matchups between the 49ers and the Packers, the winning team has lost the following game. So it happens. You know, fairly regularly. You win this one, it's a tough ball game, and then you end up losing the next one. Uh, Packers, seven playoff losses at home in the last 20 seasons. That is the most in the NFL. Uh, there's not an advantage, it doesn't feel like. Jimmy Garoppolo, 21-6 and six career record as a starter on the road, which is insane. That's the second highest win percentage in the NFL since the 70s. Um, let's see, or actually since the 1970 merger. So that's that's crazy. Kyle Shanahan, thirty five and fifteen as the 49ers head coach when Jimmy G is his starter. He is eight and twenty eight without Garoppolo. Which, yep. which a I, lot of people throwing dirt on Jimmy and them throwing away three first round picks for somebody not named Jimmy, I think is a mistake. God, uh, I would yes. love to see what they could build. Forget what this team looks like right now. Let's say you have Jimmy next year and all of those picks. So here's the and I, going back to that draft. I don't necessarily blame them for wanting to move up. I, you and I talked at the time. I think three first round picks to move up. It, it was was a little crazy, but I don't blame them for wanting to at least look at a different quarterback because, I mean, we we talked about his record with Jimmy G. Uh, he's eight and twenty eight without him. Like they got to find a different quarterback. Like they got to find somebody that can stay healthy. Now Garoppolo, right now, he's healthy, but he just has not proven that he can stay healthy. So yeah, but you don't know that the next guy can be healthy either. Agreed. So that's a Agreed. that's a constant, just unknown. Oh, it's just a it's always a crapshoot. Always a crapshoot. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, eleven and ten in his career as a starter in the playoffs. He is seven and hey, nine. Since hey, they I'm, won the done, Super Bowl. I'm I'm done with this. Last night I went to bed. I had a few pops, and and I. I was I was I was having none of the greatest of all time conversations. D- that's done. That's done. At some point in time, the regular season has to go away, and you have to start looking at postseason. And this guy is about as half-assed, mediocre, piece of shit quarterback that you've ever seen in the postseason. All right. So to put him in the pantheon of a is he top five? Is he top ten? He ain't close. He ain't close. There's 50 feet. There's a goddamn Grand Canyon. There's a chasm between him and the greats that won in the playoffs. Okay? And you can take all your regular season mumbo-jumbo bullshit, and you could do something else with that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I don't ever want to have that conversation again, and I want people who do to be thrown out of a plate glass window. That's I, I see you jumped on that very quickly since uh since I mentioned his uh seven and nine record in the playoffs since uh since the Super Bowl. <laughs> I, I you had me for a second. I was like, 
did I did I say something about him being no, the greatest? Like, no, I'm I, just no, I'm just, so. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I, I, I made up my mind as soon as that game ended last night. I'm I'm not having these conversations with people anymore. I did I'm, notice on I'm Twitter, just by the way. not uh, because they have to stop. They just have. Oh yeah, to. no, I I did notice on Twitter last night that there were a lot of people that were. Oh. I mean, they had tweets in the drafts for. I mean, weeks and weeks just waiting yeah. for that moment. Everybody's just waiting uh, on Rodgers to fail so they can. Fail. And so this is this is so I I put a tweet out my own and I just want to be I want to be on record. I've hated this sob far before it became politically cool to hate Aaron Rodgers. Yes. All right, <laughs> I was out on an island hating him, and I had hundreds of people a year. Why do you hate Aaron Rodgers? Why do you guys an asshole? Guys a diva. Guys a prick. Like, I don't care that he's a good football player. He's a POS. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I don't see that. I don't see that. Oh, he does one thing politically that you disagree with, and everybody now wants to bury him. Forget about the the two, last two decades where he just doesn't talk to his mom. Like, oh, okay. That's not a red <laughs> flag of somebody who's an asshole. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somewhere around there. Uh, Robbie Gould, by the way. 20 of 20 on field goal attempts in his career in the postseason. Uh, yep. It's the most makes without a miss in the Super Bowl era. And Jimmy Garoppolo. Big, big, yeah. big I, day for bald guys. Big oh, day yes. for bald guys. Oh, Bobby yes. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, 4-1 and one in his career as a starter in the playoffs. That is the highest postseason win percentage as a starting quarterback in 49ers history. Now, I remember when the 49ers <laughs> took Alex Smith and they passed on Aaron Rodgers, and then we saw Aaron Rodgers three or four years later become the Aaron Rodgers that he was, and they won a Super Bowl, and the 49ers, after they had lost their Super Bowl and Harbaugh had left, had just gone to garbage. And everybody started this, the curse of Aaron Rodgers. Well, ever since I ever heard the conversation of the curse of Aaron Rodgers, the 49ers have never lost in the postseason to the Packers head-to-head. They're 4-0 against them. So yep. that curse is a pretty shitty curse. So he's not even good at like cursing people. This is what <laughs> this is what happens when you draft a guy from Berkeley. Okay. All oh right. my god. It. <laughs> uh. So Jimmy G, eleven out of nineteen, zero touchdowns, one pick. He was sacked four times. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, twenty out of twenty nine, two hundred twenty five yards, no touchdowns, no picks. He was sacked five times. Uh. This was not a quarterback win. For, for the San Francisco 49ers, bottom line. And I don't know that Aaron Rodgers necessarily lost the game, but uh, he did not play well enough to win it. They, well, let they me tell could you this, all the people that are blaming this loss on the special teams, all right? Well, if Aaron Rodgers doesn't, can actually get the ball in the end zone instead of settling for a field goal, then you don't get a field goal block. Well, I mean, okay? he, he played hero ball. If, like he, if Aaron Rodgers doesn't go an easy three and out, and have his team punting from the end zone, you don't get a punt block for a touchdown, all right? Get a couple of first downs, and if they block it, well, then now they're just on the 40-yard line, and your defense can do what they've done. So Aaron has to have some responsibility for the special team sucking because he also sucked. He was capable and and, and responsible for 10 points. Yes. 10 points. He uh, So Aaron Rodgers, you know, that last play that – the last offensive play that the Packers had, that third yep. down in, in 11 or whatever it was, he threw to a double-covered Adams. And if you look back, there was uh, Ad- it was uh, Lazard that was running directly across the middle that already had the first down. Like, that was right there, and he was wide open. And instead, he threw to Adams... He's, he's an cover. incredible talent. He's one. He, he's he's got m- so much talent and ability, but this guy is a diva. He wants to be a superstar, and he is a superstar. He he likes being a superstar. He wants to make that big throw. He wants to to thread the needle instead of just dumping the ball down and getting the first down. He he. This is what he wants. Yeah, yeah. And and, he and he's had, willing to lose with it. And you know what? Uh, that's what's insane. Good. Because you're losing with it all the time. Yeah. Like, you him, actually him. never won with it, by the way. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> well, because he because, wasn't in that position uh, no, back when, when he actually he won. won a Super he wasn't Bowl. a star. He was just a guy on a rookie contract that people didn't know if he was good or not. Yeah. Yeah. Now, he uh, he has gotten, obviously, better since his rookie contract and whatnot. But uh, 
I mean, they had a they had a hell of a team back then. But yeah, in this situation, uh, average depth of target on this one: Aaron Rodgers at seven point nine, Jimmy Garoppolo six point four, and that makes all the sense in the world. Uh, the 49ers started with a pass on sixty six point seven percent of their series, and Green Bay only fifty eight point three. Again, surprising that you know the 49ers of all teams would start with the pass more often than Green Bay. And yet here we are. So it was uh it was very interesting. We'll uh we'll well, move- still have the greatest player, I think, in in, in the league, right? Oh, we now. didn't even bring up Debo, Debo but my God, he did everything. I mean yeah, Debo's he, unreal. He did, and he ha- he has all year. He has all year. I talked about it the 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 whatever night that I did the show by myself. Yeah. Uh, like it it's he's just become that guy to where on a regular season when they're playing on the East Coast and the one o'clock time slot or noon time slot for us and um, there's 13 games on. I'm going to have an eyeball on, on what the 49ers are doing as long as Debo's healthy and on the field. I'm just but going speaking, to. Speaking of him being healthy and on the field, he did get hurt on his last play. Have you seen anything he, about that? No, and I have no idea what's going on with him. He also did that after the last game. He was limping off the field before the game ended. No, this guy is struggling to stay on the field, and he's he's had injury issues the entire time. Through these playoff games, he's just muscling through them, man. He Too is soon. an absolute freak. I would give anything in the world for him to have one good, healthy season with capable people at the quarterback. Yes. Yes. That's it. it would That's be all nice. I want for Debo. It would be nice. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.